All right, welcome to uh, NurseX uh, NCLEX and Nursing Review. We're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We're talking about fluid. We're talking about uh, fluid in the body and what happens when it's in excess, what happens when it's a, in a deficit. First of all, fluid distribution. So fluid distribution, uh, intracellular fluid um, makes up about 40% of the fluid or 40% of the body in total. Um, and then 20% of the body's uh, is made out of uh, extracellular fluid. 15% is interstitial and 5% is intravascular. Uh, infants, their total body weight, 80% of that is fluid. And uh, for elderly people, 50% of that is fluid. And nursing considerations for both of those are that when you're more elderly or if you're an infant, fluid's going to be a thing that's going to be a little harder to maintain. So a lot of elderly people won't like to, you know, they'll have a, a lack of thirst, um, you know, just brought on by just uh, older age, even though they need to maintain that uptake of water, they just don't, don't have the, the taste for it anymore. So um, a lot of dehydration cases will come in. Uh, and then same thing with infants, uh, because their body weight is so small and 80% of it's actually fluid, uh, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, any of those GI problems is actually going to be a huge deal because uh, a, a baby can lose a, a ton uh, of weight and those that shift in fluid can cause a definite shift in electrolytes as well, making causing somebody to be severely ill. Uh, so fluid loss. Four liters in an average adult is going to be pretty severe. Um, there's going to be some definitely some issues. Uh, cardiovascular wise, uh, fluid wise, um, neuro wise, there's going to be some uh, consciousness issues going on. Uh, they'll be more agitated, more um, just just more upset in general. Uh, eight liters is real, real bad. That's when you start to see uh, super severe deficits. Uh, urine output can be super minimal at this point, um, and it can be very, very, very deadly. Uh, so now here's a question for you guys. How much is one liter of fluid uh, in terms of pounds? So you guys should all know this conversion if you're in nursing school. This should You should have this written in your brain. It sh you should fall asleep at night thinking this. What is one liter of fluid to pounds? Uh, fluid movement. So fluid movement, there's four ways of uh, fluid movement. There's diffusion, osmosis, active transport, and filtration. Uh, so active transport or diffusion is the movement of solutes from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So you have a lot of particulates on in one area um, on equal fluid volume and not so many in another area through a, a permeable membrane. Those solutes will actually travel across that membrane if they're allowed to, you know, if they're big enough or if that, you know, permeable. So it actually permeates. So if those solutes can, they'll actually want to slide on over past that membrane to even out the fluid distribution of that solute. And so that's diffusion. Osmosis is the movement of water to even out that concentration. So if there's a whole bunch of um, solutes in one area and not so many in another, if water is what can go ahead and you know, even out that concentration between those two uh, differing membranes, um, the water will actually travel to the area of high concentration in and of itself to go ahead and make that um, even. Active transport is, so diffusion and osmosis do not require any energy at all. Uh, it's just a passive form of uh, transporting either the water or the solutes uh, across those membranes. Active transport requires energy, ATP, in order to go ahead and move those things. So you'll see that in the, the sodium potassium pump in a cell. Uh, it actually takes energy for that, you know, action and reaction to go ahead and take place. So it's essentially moving a solute or moving a particle to where it isn't normally. It doesn't naturally want to go there. So in, if something doesn't naturally want to go someplace, you know, it's going to take energy to move it from one place to the other. Uh, filtration. Filtration is 
um, when there's an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, essentially it just pushes the water or the solutes through that uh, membrane and the the pressure is what essentially pushes um, the fluid or the solute through that membrane. Uh, osmolarity. So osmolarity is the number of particles dissolved in a liter of solution. And so that's actually measure, measured in milliosmoles. Uh, so normal serum milliosmoles is 280 to 295. Uh, now that's the that's our normal serum level essentially the the serum level that's running through our blood whenever they're talking about serum they're talking about what's going pumping through your veins so now an isotonic solution is going to go ahead and mimic that same concentration it's not going to be exactly the same but it's going to be somewhere around that range a little bit more or a little bit less on either side so you're looking at a range of 250 to 350 so about a range of 100 Hypotonic solutions is less than 250. Uh, so that's going to you know, be a solution that does not have as many solutes in it uh, per liter of solution. And then hypertonic is going to be, let's just say salt, for instance, if that's our solute, it's going to be a saltier solution than your blood or than a hypotonic solution. And that's going to be greater than 350 uh, particles per liter of solution. Uh, fluid intake and output. Uh, so intake and output actually equal each other. Uh, 2,500 milliliters a day uh, a person on average intakes and releases. And so 1,200 uh, mLs of fluid is, is the normal uh, intake uh, of fluid a day. And then there's a thousand that we get through food, and then three hundred uh, that we get through normal respiration, normal body system uh, activity. Whenever you expend energy, water is an actual byproduct of expending energy, and so um, that also gets put into our system uh, through that the means of um, you know ATP and so on and so forth. So output, on the other hand. Uh, 500 of that just comes via the form of breathing. So if you breathe into, if you took, you inhaled and you exhaled into a bag for 24 hours straight um, in a in an escapeless system, so you can never lose anything that came out of that, um, you'd actually get 500 mLs of fluid. Uh, so, and then also for another 500 mLs of fluid, uh, you have sweat. You sweat about a half a liter a day. I know you can't, maybe not be able to feel it, maybe not be able to see it, but in general, you sweat about a half a liter of fluid a day. Uh, 1,400 um, milliliters comes out via your kidneys, so in your urine, and then 100 uh, via your fecal matter. Uh, fluid volume deficit. All right. When there's a loss of extracellular fluid or an accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space, that's known as a fluid volume deficit. Most common causes of uh, fluid volume deficit are going to be GI dysfunctions. Uh, renal and endocrine issues can also be a culprit uh, for fluid volume deficit, but more common than anything, it's going to be a GI dysfunction. Uh, renal and uh, Endocrine issues are also a cause. Uh, fluid volume replacement is going to be either PO or IV. Uh, so not all the time. If somebody ha is in fluid volume deficit, which a lot of students will get their, you know, get to thinking like, oh man, you know, their fluid volume deficit, uh, their, you know, hematocrit is super high. Like, oh, man, like, well, like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I know. We got to give them fluid. So immediately you think, I got to put them on an IV, you know, even though this person is walking, they're talking, they're doing, you know, all they need to do, you just need to set a cup of water in front of them. Hey, do me a favor, drink this. All right. It's super important that you do um, because it's, it's going to even out your system. It's going to get you hydrated and it's important to be hydrated so that your body functions uh, as best as possible. That's all you got to do. All right, not everybody needs to get stuck with an IV, as fun as that is.
so fluid volume deficit causes, uh, you know, a loss of fluid uh, containing normal saline, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, nasogastric suction, and burns uh, can be a culprit of fluid volume deficit. Uh, fluid volume excess is overhydration. Uh, so the most primary cause of uh, fluid volume excess is going to be a cardiovascular disease. So we're looking at things like heart failure. Heart failures are a, a giant thing. Um, so one of the most common causes, one of the most common heart conditions um, in America. Um, so the heart isn't pumping as efficiently. And so because the heart's not pumping as efficiently, by the time the pressure gets to the kidneys in order to go ahead and flush out that whole system, it's not, the pressure's not there. Since the pressure is not there, there's no filtration. And since there's no filtration, the body will retain water. Um, And so you can see symptoms like weight gain, edema, dyspnea, increase in uh, blood pressure, tachycardia, um, and then in other cases where there's cerebral edema, there's decrease uh, or loss of consciousness, there's a coma, and then in sometimes, in some cases, there's death. Another cause is sometimes just too much intake of water. Um, some people are just addicted um, to just gallons and gallons of water uh, that you shouldn't drink, or sometimes it's too much antidiuretic hormone. Uh, so obviously... A diuretic is going to cause you uh, to urinate, uh, to cause you to diurese. And then, so if you have an increase in your antidiuretic hormone uh, or too much antidiuretic hormone, you'll go ahead and retain that water. Uh, fluid volume excess treatment, it restricts their, yeah, you should restrict your patient's fluid intake uh, and definitely their sodium intake because wherever Sodium goes, flu is going to come right along with it. So if their sodium's high, their fluid's high. So we keep their sodium down in their diet, uh, and we restrict them to, you know, six cups of water instead of eight, or, you know, so on and so forth, six cups of fluid. Some people like their coffee, they like their cranberry juice, whatever it is, it has to be maintained in a certain uh, regulated amount. Uh, diuretics, uh, so you got your, your Lasix, your uh, aldactone, um, uh, all there's other diuretics as well. Uh, you're you're going to want to elevate edematous areas. So once that fluid gets trapped in an area, it's, it can be very difficult for that fluid to go ahead and escape. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have that, whatever part of the body, let's just say it's my right arm. You're going to want to have that part elevated above my heart. And so the fluid will come back down into my circulatory system uh, with the hopes, well, first of all, with the hopes of, you know, lessening the pressure and lessening every, the amount of fluid that's in my arm, but having that drain back into my system and hopefully back out of, out of my kidneys so I can go ahead and die reset. Um, daily weights, they need to be accurate, all right? You need to weigh the person the same way Every time. If you, if you weighed them with a gallon yesterday, you weigh them with a gallon today. With one gallon, with one pillowcase, however you do it. If you do the whole bed, you know, thing, if the person's able and capable and moving, um, you tell them to get out of the bed, you zero the bed, you tell them to get back in the bed, the one sheet or the one gallon that you had, and same thing as yesterday. Um, and annotate that in your notes whenever you're doing your documentation. Uh, I's and O's, uh, keep track. Um, so have a sheet out wherever, whenever they go eat their food, they eat their meals, keep track of their intake and their output. Uh, and you're going to want to check to see their hematocrit levels. Keep an eye on that because that's going to be your greatest key to see if this person's being hydrated or not. If their hematocrit's high, remember hematocrit's showing you the amount of blood cells per liter of fluid. And so... If the hematocrit is high, that means that person is going to be dehydrated. If the hematocrit is lower, that means there's more overall fluid in that one liter of whatever you would take out. Um, And it'll show, okay, this person is getting rehydrated again. Um, And then as far as 
the assessment. Uh, we'll go ahead and compare in the next video just a, a quick chart of fluid volume deficit versus fluid volume excess. All right, thank you guys so much. And, uh, you know, hey, good luck on your next test.